It still exists. Fascinating, mysterious and protected. The amazing beauty of nature. Paradise on Earth. Unlike the hustle and bustle of the nearby city of Gailin in the Guangxi region in the heart of China, the landscape that follows the Lijiang River has a rural and idyllic atmosphere. Rural life here is blessed with beautiful scenery and the landscape around Gailin is synonymous with the magnificence of the legendary Middle Empire. A boat trip along the Lijiang River is an ideal way to travel and to experience this impressive and famous area with its unique and bizarrely shaped peaks. The geological formations here date back more than 300 million years. At that time, the Gailin region was entirely covered by ocean. A dense layer of limestone shells settled on the ocean bed. As the water gradually evaporated, a chalky landscape developed. After millions of years, the forces of erosion created a magnificent landscape that has inspired countless artists and poets right up to the present day. The picture book of a hundred miles is the description given to the unusual course of the Lijiang River. And its name is no exaggeration. This stretch of the river is more or less 83 kilometers long, but such detail is almost irrelevant compared to the magnificence of this picturesque setting. Its curiously formed cast peaks often extend for several hundred meters, and virtually each one of them contains a cave. Numerous stalactites and stalagmites lie within the caves of the region's impressive mountains. Some, such as the Reed Cave, have in recent years been open to the public. Meanwhile, the karst peaks along the Lijiang River are one of the most visited attractions in China. The fabulous scenery defies the imagination. Several poets, such as the 9th century Tang poet Han Yu and many writers, have praised the beauty of this region in their work. According to Han Yu, the river resembles a green silk ribbon. The mountains are reminiscent of blue jade hairpins. His words ring true even today. Spectacular rock formations flank the course of the Lijiang, a tributary of the Pearl River, China's third largest.
Like sugarcane, these cast formations dominate the scenery. Virtually each one has been given a name. Imaginative names for the mountains are quite common in Asia. Here, the names are fantastic and full of ancient symbolism. Many of the names are extremely colourful, such as yellow clothes in the water and grandfather gazes at an apple. Most of this region's ancient stories and legends tell of the mysterious mountains and rocks along the Lijiang. There is, for example, the Jiangbishan, or Elephant Trunk Hill. According to legend, a divine elephant came from heaven to visit the people of Gailin in order to assist them in their work. However, hearing of this, the Divine Emperor became extremely angry and stabbed the elephant in the back when he was about to drink from the river. The elephant turned into stone. Today, Elephant Trunk Hill, situated in the south of the city of Gailin, has become one of the most famous landmarks of the entire region. Striking precipices and rock needles unite in a stunningly beautiful panorama full of glorious mystique. Here, both wind and water have created a truly remarkable mountain world. The diversity of forms in the cast mountains that are partly covered with bushes and flowers seems to be without end. In daytime, the gravel banks along the shores of the Lijiang are frequented by farmers who lead their buffalo to drink from the river. The local cormorant fishermen are an equally exotic sight. The area's cormorant fishermen use captive water birds to attract fish. Because their necks are secured to their master, they're forced to submit their catch to him. In addition to traditional fishing boats, the river also attracts modern tour boats. The traditional cormorant fishermen continue to fish alongside the large commercial tour boats. It's not surprising that due to the overwhelming beauty of the surrounding mountains, that this section of the Lijian River is one of the most impressive natural landscapes in the whole of China. Blyde River Canyon this 26 kilometer long and over 800 meter deep canyon is one of the most beautiful regions of the Transvaal Drakens Mountains in South Africa. The canyon is flanked by the famous rocks of the three rondevels whose shape resembles a traditional African round hut.
The first glimpse of these circular rock formations makes it evident why Blyde River Canyon is considered to be one of the greatest natural wonders in Africa. The red sandstone cliffs are almost vertical and in some sections measure several hundred meters down to the canyon and river below. Most vantage points are very accessible and located close to Blyde's various parking areas. Clouds collect above the rocks and a mist gradually covers the land and scant vegetation of Blyde River Canyon. After the Grand Canyon in the United States and Namibia's Fish River Canyon, Blyde River Canyon is the third largest in the world. In the depths of the valley, the landscape vanishes mysteriously under an increasingly dense cloak of mist. However, the weather can't spoil the beauty of the scenery that surrounds the three rondevelles. On the contrary, it makes it even more dramatic. The extreme climate, various elevations and the inconsistent composition of the terrain give this landscape a unique character. Numerous streams, waterfalls and small rivers have shaped the land as well as the relentless effects of erosion. The steep rock faces and canyons of the escarpment in the South African province of East Transvaal have created a natural border between High Veldt and Low Veldt. To enjoy this area and its cascades of water, it's a good idea to leave the busy parking areas and popular vantage points. The scorching of the lower Lowveld benefits the survival of numerous varieties of plants and cacti that have adapted to the hot climate. Blyde River Canyon first attracted interest in the 19th century, although this was not caused by its natural beauty. In 
In 1873, gold digger William Trafford made a sensational discovery that gave rise to a gold rush throughout the entire region. At the confluence of the Truer and Blyde rivers, there were large deposits of gold that led to the discovery of the place that is now known as Burke's Luck Potholes. Over the course of several millions of years, the river water created fascinating cylindrical holes in the yellow dolomite rock. A number of wooden bridges span Blyde River Canyon and provide remarkable and dramatic views of the terrain. Water continues to erode the rock and creates further holes, swirls and whirlpools in this part of the canyon in which Tom Burke discovered a fortune in gold. The canyon's gold has long since been exhausted, but the wealth of nature and its unique splendour has survived to the present day. Close to this section of the canyon is the nearby Blyde River Sport Nature Reserve, renowned for its rich and diverse flora. The rocks of the Great Escarpment are home to many rare and impressive species of bird, a magnificent and protected habitat. Blyde River Canyon does full justice to its legendary reputation as being one of the most breathtaking natural wonders on the entire African continent. And the river relentlessly continues to cut deeper into the soft layers of the region's ancient slate beds. Just outside the town of Page in the state of Arizona, a narrow and unimpressive entrance leads into the mysterious world of Antelope Canyon. The small Antelope Creek River that is infrequently fed by additional water has throughout the course of thousands of years cut a fascinating canyon into the red sandstone and created a natural work of art. A true celebration of form and color, unearthly and of amazing beauty with a unique air of mystique.
For thousands of centuries, Antelope Canyon lay undiscovered. But in 1931, a 12-year-old Navajo Indian girl accidentally discovered the entrance to the canyon while herding sheep. Her discovery led to one of the most impressive slot canyons in the United States. The numerous lines and shapes on the rock are mesmerizing. Incredible patterns on the swirling, wave-like rock were once covered by torrents of water, and now they're so smooth and perfectly shaped that they look like an artistic sculpture. During the day, the impressive and colourful play of light and shadow constantly conjures up new visual wonders in the heart of Antelope Canyon. Some sections of the canyon are only a couple of meters wide and thus attract little daylight. But in other sections there's a clear view of the sky. The water has forced its way up to 30 meters deep through the red, shimmering layers of rock. And much of the canyon is similar to a cave. With its unique beauty and the splendor of its various shapes and patterns, Antelope Canyon is becoming increasingly popular, especially with landscape photographers and artists. Slot Canyon is featured on many a picture postcard and over the years countless art galleries have played their part in bringing international recognition to this natural wonder of the world. The intriguing sight of the light and shadow on the rock walls is known to be among the most impressive and unforgettable natural experiences in the southwest of the United States. The natural spectacle of light fascinates people from around the globe and transports them into a strange world, a world full of natural energy and magic. When the wind blows the glittering specks of sand dust into the canyon, it creates dancing cones of light that are a feast to the eye.
There are those that believe that the mysterious beauty of the canyon, with its fascinating undulations, arches and lines, is the work of a divine force. Even though the length of this slot canyon measures only 150 meters, the forms and special atmosphere of this place will long be remembered by all those who come here. In order to enter the upper section of Antelope Canyon, visitors first have to climb up into the daylight before arriving at a second entry point. Here, the route ahead leads into the depths of darkness. But soon the full splendor of the sandstone and the dimensions of this cave-like canyon are revealed. However, the canyons can be hazardous. A few years ago, a number of tourists drowned when this area became awash with treacherous flash floods. As a result, the canyon is now closed to the public at the first sign of heavy thunderstorms. In this way, such tragedies can be avoided. Antelope Canyon is often praised as a masterpiece of nature, and it is undoubtedly its unearthly beauty that provides this mystical canyon with its universal and captivating appeal. Tosha National Park in Namibia, one of the largest wildlife reserves in the world. No other park in Africa contains so many animals. During the dry winter months, fascinating fauna appears around the few remaining waterholes that are the lifeblood of this fascinating region. So it's at a time like this that many species of animals can be observed at close quarters and in large numbers. The zebra is particularly common to this region. Many waterholes are an oasis of tranquility. Some elephants seem to prefer the peace and seclusion of their own private waterhole. The mightiest elephants of Etosha, the largest in Africa, and on any safari, their maternal nature is wonderful to see. The 
The Atosha salt pan is located in the center of the park. 5,000 square kilometers of arid terrain. An almost endless plain of fine silvery white sand. What little vegetation there is extends along the dried up lake. In contrast to the lifeless salt desert, this is where new life begins all over again. To date, 110 different mammals have been recorded in this national park. A truly remarkable variety that's also reflected in the vegetation of this region. Over 340 species of bird populate this unique habitat and little escapes the ever vigilant birds of prey. The vastness of this magnificent landscape is overwhelming. The nature park covers an area of almost 22,000 square kilometers. This extraordinary wildlife kingdom contains numerous surprises, such as when a giraffe hides its head in the branches of a tree. Others survey their territory with caution and suspicion and many other animals start to appear from each direction. An elephant's mud bath is a messy business. However, they're not here to clean themselves, but to cool off in the scorching heat. Despite their huge dimensions, the tusks of these elephants are relatively small due to both the lack of minerals in their diet and also for genetic reasons. Many animals follow seasonal routes and travel to those areas that may contain good supplies of food and water. Depending on the weather and the time of year, the herds either travel great distances or, as with the lion, remain within given regions of the savanna. During the day, the lion is a master in the art of relaxation. The large predators prefer the hours of dusk and dawn for hunting their prey. Surprisingly, the actual hunters are the females who also care for their offspring, while the males guard the territory and fend off any would-be interlopers. Today, around 300 lions live in the Atosha National Park Nature Reserve. It's not known how many birds inhabit this region. 
Long periods of rainfall attract almost a million captivating flamingos to the Fisher Pan. The most fascinating natural spectacles are to be seen around the park's numerous waterholes, where the drinking protocol is determined by the elephant. The natural beauty and variety of African wildlife, whether individually, in groups or in large herds, is a truly magnificent experience. There is no finer place in which to observe, study and marvel at the lush African fauna than in this remarkable nature reserve. variety of sights and sounds of the exotic creatures that live here leave an indelible impression on all those who are lucky enough to witness it firsthand. It's difficult to say goodbye to the Atosha National Park. After all, the burning Namibian sun shines onto one of the most magnificent natural paradises in the world. A few kilometers beyond the city of Bharatpur in Rajasthan, is one of the most unique and beautiful natural habitats in India. Despite its relatively small dimensions, the Keoladio Ghana National Park is a veritable bird paradise. Rich and abundant vegetation, swampland and numerous small ponds make it an ideal habitat for bird life. wetlands of the Keoladio National Park are home to a large number of rare and almost extinct birds. Yet surprisingly, what is now a nature reserve was originally designed as a hunting area. In the 19th century, the Maharajas of Bharatpur exploited this animal-rich area and organized extensive hunting expeditions, during which thousands of birds were shot. At breeding time, the trees contain large numbers of nests as the park is home to more than 370 species of bird. Today's park owes its existence not only to the hunting requirements of the Maharajas, but also to a dam that was built to protect the nearby city of Bharatpur from flooding.
over the years, an ever-increasing biotope was created here with small forests, ponds and swamp-like savannas that not only attracted birds but also mammals. The former rulers of Bharatpur were less interested in the picturesque qualities of their newly developed scenery than they were in the fauna. Since then, both the Maharaja's hunting parties and the country's former British colonial rulers have been relegated to the history books. And now this desolate region is tranquil once again. Vast sections of the 29 square kilometer national park are covered by water. Wetlands now comprise around a third of Keoladio. The splendid scenery not only has a special appeal to bird life. In recent years, an increasing number of human visitors have been attracted to the park. Despite its growing popularity, the park's ecology has been little affected by tourism. It faces a greater challenge by the encroachment of agriculture as more and more farmers have settled in the surrounding area. Although herds of cattle do not pose an immediate threat to this nature reserve, various pesticides and chemicals washed here by the elements could indeed become a major hazard. Some of the park's animals have already been showing signs of poisoning. However, as the problem has now been pinpointed, various protective measures have been introduced. So the present and future conservation of this magical and mysterious landscape that is an important habitat for a number of endangered species has been safeguarded. As it is now an officially designated national park, Keoladio is a vital sanctuary for the protection of both indigenous and non-indigenous birds. Indeed, one of the world's rarest birds, the Siberian crane, also visits this remarkable nature reserve. Travelling to its winter feeding grounds, these almost extinct birds cover an amazing 6,000 kilometres. The Keoladio National Park has also become an important refuge for a large number of other species, such as the kingfisher and numerous colourful parrots. It's 
therefore not surprising that this nature reserve close to Bharatpur has become a famous and important centre with ornithologists. With its impressive biodiversity and outstanding ecology, the Keoladio National Park is one of India's most cherished nature reserves. Yet this exceptional habitat mainly owes its existence to the former hunting fever of the Maharajas. Without the former rulers of Rajasthan, who protected what is now the Keolario National Park, this landscape would certainly not be as well preserved as it is today. Conservation at its most beautiful. Surrounded by the grey limestone of the muddy mountains, the rocks in the Valley of Fire, the oldest state park in Nevada, begin to glow. The red rocks do indeed appear to burn in a magical fire that seems to transform them into stone. The power of erosion has shaped these rocks over the course of millions of years. The origin of this glowing sandstone dates back almost 150 million years to the Jurassic period, when the visible rock strata of today was formed by sand dunes. Some of the rocks also contain the remnants of the earliest inhabitants of this region, the Fremont people. The earliest archaeological discoveries date back almost 2,300 years and several petroglyphs are located around at Lattle Rock. The vegetation within the Valley of Fire consists mostly of cacti and various types of desert shrub such as the evergreen creosote bush. Following the Fremont people and those of the basket maker culture, this rocky domain was regularly visited by members of the legendary Anasazi tribe who originated in the nearby Moapa Valley. It is believed that European settlers first came here in 1826 when the area was inhabited by the Paiute Indians. For the Anasazi, the Shining Rock Formation symbolized a sacred land in which they held various religious ceremonies until they began to vacate the area in around the 12th century. The strangely shaped sandstone rocks were situated in the hunting grounds of the native Indians. So in subsequent years there was much hostility and bloodshed. Yet the nostalgic atmosphere of the Wild West is still a thing of the present. The last legendary gunfight took place here at the end of the 19th century when a criminal sought refuge among the rocks. But the magnificent scenery of the Valley of Fire does not need cowboys, westerns and gunfights to improve it. Its natural splendor speaks for itself. 
The intense colors and amazing sandstone formations literally fire the imagination of all those who come here. Even today, the powerful forces of nature continue to impress. The process of erosion goes on, yet even though it happens at an almost imperceptible pace, the landscape is constantly changing. And during the course of each day, the sun transforms each aspect of the scenery. And the valley of fire is cloaked by the magic of twilight. This planet contains numerous wonders of nature. Although many have already been revealed, how many more are waiting to be discovered? Today, it is the responsibility of UNESCO to protect this natural world.